Welcome everyone, welcome back to the Kyle Maxwell Show. Today I have one of my great friends on P.F. Young. I was recently on, well not recently, it was a while back. I was on his show a couple months ago and now he's coming back on my show for another conversation. It's always great talking with him, so we're going to go ahead and introduce him. Uh, synthesizing the intellectual dark web, philosophy with modern internet and meme culture. P.F. Young, he is focused on the work of Jordan Peterson. And by the way, he has one of the, I always tell him, he has one of the best YouTube channels in the country. It, is, is, that, is that phenomenal? And we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into that. I appreciate that. This conversation. He makes heavy use of excerpts of his lectures and videos along with ex other excerpts of um, other famous people, including Robin Sapolsky. Sapolsky, yeah. And, uh, and others. A great YouTube channel. I would uh, identify him as a essentially a, a Jordan enthusiast, probably one of the only ones that exist, one of the only decent, one of the decent ones. And um, today we're going to have a, a really great conversation. I'm looking forward to it. So PF Young, or Young, how, how would you like me to? <laughs> to PF well, Young is a YouTube okay. channel. I just, it's just it's nice if people can't uh, Google my name and my YouTube channel comes up first. Yeah. So yeah. it's just uh, but you can call me Paul. No problem. Yeah. Thank, thank you for coming on. It's going to be a great conversation. Thank you. Yes. All right. So um, I guess how I want to start this. Um, so your whole entire corpus of work is, is, is centralized around Jordan. So before we get into, you know, why you came, why you came to want to dedicate your entire channel to his work and, you know, I talk about other things too. So before we get into that, I want you to steal man a question and steal man this whole position that's, uh, that's been floating around. And I see a lot of vitriol towards Jordan Peterson. Let's, let's, let's address that. I want you to steal man, not just the left, but just probably any, any position as to why someone like Jordan Peterson is hated. Like, why do people, why do you feel as if it would be a logical reason to not like and disagree of, jo of Jordan's work? Sure. Yeah, there's a couple. I mean, I think there's a couple valid reasons from different perspectives. So there's a couple different strains of criticisms I see. The number one uh, strain I see is the atheist criticism of Peterson. That to yeah. me is the most valid. So imagine that you are uh, an atheist. Imagine you're someone who carefully considers your worldview, you know, and has come to the conclusion, I don't believe in God for these reasons, for, you know, yeah. my personal experience, all this different stuff. And then Jordan Peterson comes along and says, hey, I know you say you're an atheist, but you're really not an atheist. So, you know, it's like, OK, I would think he was a douchebag, too. So like that initially is like I understand why, you know, people would have a, a issue with him. He defines words in a very um, non-traditional way, I would say. Although, you know, so like his conception of religion or his conception of truth, it's like truth is, um, you know, Truth is more like a tool than a than a um, you know like a fact in and of itself, yeah. or that religion is what you act out. Your fundamental uh, worldview is based on your, or excuse me, your fund you, the systems of implicit axioms you have. That's your religious belief system, whether or not you articulate it out or or not. And people are like, well, no, religion is like a church, and you know, uh, uh, religious texts and belief in deities and metaphysical beings and all that. And it's like, well, yeah, that's how most people conceptualize it. But, um, you know, so it makes sense that certainly from the atheist perspective, there's um, pushback on that. I guess the other line of criticism is would be from the very ultra progressive left. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think I like I label them as the, the postmodern left or the postmodern right, because I think it's the same thing when you revert back to the kind of power identity politics games. It's 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 it, you're, you're you're espousing postmodern philosophy, whether you know it or not, going back to the idea that, you know, wh whether or not you can articulate what your implicit belief systems are doesn't change the fact that, you know, they are what they are and they have consequences. Yeah. Um, you know. I think. 
one of the big one of the criticisms that I have that I think fits into maybe the left wing criticism is, you know, Peterson talks about being precise in your speech, right? But then in I think it was in Twelve Rules for Life, one of the rules is set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world. And it's like, but hold on, you can never set your house in perfect order because perfection is impossible. So it seems like the implication of that is you know, you, you can never criticize the world because you can yeah. never set your house in perfect order. To me, it's like. Yeah, that is kind of weird. You know, if I was ever to ask him a question, I would I would ask, you know, is that a, is that should that have been worded differently? Because I think a lot of people, uh, you know, will say, well, Peterson focuses on, you, you know, you just need to put your individual life together. And then once you've done that, then you can make, you know, sweeping political changes and address climate change or address all these big issues or whatever. And it's like, well, you know. You're never going to be able to do that if you have to wait till your house is in perfect order before you do that. So, you know, I, I get that people can, you know, see that he's he's putting too much emphasis on individual action when there should be more collective action. But even then, you know, you need to become the kind of person who can affect collective action or lead collective action or, you know, make a difference at a large scale before doing that. And that always starts at the individual level. So. It's interesting. Yeah. Those are the two strains I would see: the atheist and, yeah. and uh, kind of progressive perspective. That's interesting because I would say so. Those are valid criticisms in and of themselves, but I think the interesting part of that is that I don't necessarily think that those ideas are necessarily Jordan's. Like so, for instance, the first idea of so the atheistic argument. Your actions of what you what you act out is by kind of by definition your your religion or your deepest dark your not darkest but your deepest axioms that you hold. They, dark. Are, they, they yeah yeah they can be dark, but when they are when they become acted out and embodied, that is by definition your religion. I don't necessarily think that. So someone can not like that idea. They can not like whatever they want. But I don't necessarily think that that is Jordan's idea. Like I don't think that I don't think that's his idea at all because there's a <clears throat> there's a great scripture I don't remember I'm not good with remembering which which one it is but it's a popular one by their fruits you shall know them so that mean that means probably you probably know a lot better than me because I just started reading the gospels and I think I came across yeah. them first I could be wrong though so <laughs> and when you said that I'm like yeah by the, and, and that one always stuck with me by the by their fruits you shall know them so what the, what does that mean. So by your fruits, you're you are think of yourself as a being. You can only produce what you are, your actions, what what you produce, what you put out into the world, what you what you what you work towards. So for so for instance, like if you think about um, I'm going to tie this together. You participate with your with yourself. It's like I don't think I don't think people understand that. There's, you know, like hardcore uh, psychologists like Skinner, one of my friends that's reading a lot of Skinner and a lot of people, the behavior. So they, they like to think that people are just like 100% their environments. Yeah, they're just yeah, responding I, I just, I to uh, stimulus, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's completely contradictory with, I would think, people who like who we like, more like, you know, the Jungian, uh, Jordan Peterson's work. I'm getting into Verbeke's work a lot. He talks about the participatory knowing. We talked about that on your show. It kind of runs contrary to all that because it's like, hold a minute, wait a minute. We participate in this world by the fruit that shall know them. So what what we do, and yes, it can be from a product of our environment. But how how are you going to run that against people who have been in those environments and have exceeded? There have been millions of people that have grew up, grew up in impoverished in areas and people who have you know had a like like for instance like the famous example like. There's like there was like a, a meme. I don't know if it's like a meme or whatever. Yeah, it was a meme. It was it was showed two showed two people's lives. The first the first person's life was a, a, a an alcoholic, and the person was like, "Why are you an alcoholic?" And the guy said, "Because my dad was one." And then on the other panel, it showed a successful man. He was you know had a a good job. He had a nice career. He was dressed really nice. And someone said. How did you not end up an alcoholic? And you said, because my dad was one. Hmm. So it's like, 
you can and you can find that. And that that's not just like a, a, a like a like a right wing propaganda. That's not like that's that's real. You can find that. In they the experience world. different outcomes. Yeah, it's like people exactly. who are. It's like people who um, people who abuse. I think the I think the statistics are most people who abuse children were they themselves abused. Yeah. But most people who were abused as children don't go on to abuse children. So you can have exactly. the same experience and come away with two completely different outcomes. Exactly. So when you look at something like, so when people criticize Jordan for saying, well, what you act out is by definition your religion, and you say, no, religion's in a church. It's like, like, really? So if you want to make, if you want to make, like, let's use the same alcohol example, what do you think you are, everyone else, you have to worship something. What do you think you're worshiping when you save money up? to go get that drink. What do you think you're worshiping when you place your highest value not going to go home to see your kids? I'm going to stay an extra two or three hours at the bar with my friends and get that second and third shot. What do you think you're, what do you think you're implicitly money, money worshiping? Money is your God. That, that money is your God. That, 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 that bar you're at, that bartender that you talk to more than you engage with your wife, this area that is your church. What do you think you guys are doing? What do you think you're doing in that situation? So that's that, that. So that's so the first critique, the atheist critique. And I hear, I hear that one a lot. That's not just something that you say. That one's like, okay, well, that's not Jordan's idea. Like, so you can just go ahead and kick kick that one out. Yeah, and so, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say Freud said the same thing that like the highest cultural ideals might as well be called gods. Said that. In, yeah. Um, I forget which of the texts um, it was. It wasn't interpretation of dreams. It was civilization and something something. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the, like the idea, like, so the idea is like, okay, if, like, you're, like, like worshiping money, like money is your God. Or if you're like, like, if you're a cocaine addict, well, cocaine is your God. You will lie, cheat and steal, and you will, you know, uh, bring your own destruction for something that is outside of you that you're pursuing. It's like nationalism, right? But it's, it's interesting. Cause this is always the example I go to is people say like, well, the most obvious example of religious extremism is like a jihadist terrorist I'm blowing themselves yeah, yeah. up. Yeah, that's right? like, like the, can't get any more than that. To me, of like everything wrong with religion, we can encapsulate with that. That's the archetypal representation, so to speak, of everything that's wrong with with religion. It's like okay, uh, what about nationalists or communists or people who who died for an ideology they believed in? You know, even if it's just like, or if it's just my country or something. It's yeah, like, yeah. the actions martyrdom in the ab in the abstract. Yeah. And so 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 you can say, well, the 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 abstract structure of the uh, highest value I have doesn't make direct reference to a metaphysical, you know, <clears throat> uh, a metaphysical plane or something like that. So therefore, it's not religion. It's like, yeah, but your actions are this might as well be the same as a as a jihadist, because if you if you're going to go die for something like that might as well be your religion to your point if you're going to spend all your time in a bar more yeah, so yeah. than you're with your family it's like it's a, it's convenient to not describe it as religion because then you don't have to look at it and go oh my god this is actually what i'm my life is centered around yeah, yeah. and i'm going to use i'm going to use another scholar here but i'm going to use another version to the second argument that i hear a lot and that was and i'm going to use another version to the second argument that i hear a lot and that was and that was the one that the second one made about you know not being criticized wrong there's a, there's a great, great video, video of, of Jordan. Jordan. I forgot where, where he was. was. He this was camera is going to... This camera is going to... You're good. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. How do I don't know if you can pop up. Are you using your phone or... Yeah, I need a camera. I know. This really is... This is... It's really, it's really good, good though. though. But the quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a cheap USB camera, and then I use my actual phone um, with an app that uh, doesn't high quality. But I mean, there's, 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 a, there's a really, a really great, great video. video. You, you probably, probably have, have seen, seen it, it a whole, whole lot. lot. It was when they, he was well, he Jordan was on like, on like a panel with all these like feminists and like these just you know these really egregious people, and they were having a discussion about um, activism in, in, the, in the environment, and one of the and one of the ladies in the, in the audience was like. Yeah, well, you say you know to go get your house in order, and you know what about the this, that, and that? And Jordan had a perfect, not perfect, but he had a really great response. He says, you know, like those people don't care about the environment. Like those people don't 
they're not they're not they don't they don't care about it in like an actual meaningful sense. They don't they don't actually care about this thing. They're they're using this thing for virtue and to appear as if they are empathetic towards making some type of systemic environmental change about like you don't care you use an iPhone, you take the bus, you take planes, they all took a plane there. Like you don't actually care about any, 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 any of the any of stuff he stuff. said, yeah, he said virtue on a planetary scale was his line. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm saving the environment. I'm saving the earth itself. It's like, that's pretty religious at that point. Yeah, yeah it's like, like, he was like, you know, people are just, yeah, you, like, you're, you're, you're almost blinding yourself to, you're kind of blind, you're, you're, you're only contributing towards this collective issue so you can sort of ignore what you have going on like you what you what your own problems and when he said that like in the in the lady was so like she was just so offended that, that you know jordan had the audacity to say something like that but it's like here we go again it's like i don't necessarily think that's jordan's idea either like so like, when we get into like these critiques of people like we have to understand who are just the messengers here and i think not to say you know nothing not to say that you know obviously we're going to be biased towards jordan and we're going to get into that. So anyone that's watching this, thinking, "Oh, these guys, these guys are biased," like we're going to we're going to get actually get into it. But it's like if we're going to critique Jordan and critique him, don't critique don't critique a, a a message that he just happens to be relating. Now you can critique someone for being a messenger of a bad idea, like you can do that. But if we're going to if we're going to critique them, man, like at least critique what something that that is that is specific that's that's innate in him. So we're gonna go back to this. You could probably, you probably know the, you probably know the exact location of this. He, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. What is that? That is the exact same, same thing. thing. I, yeah, yeah. Is that is that that that's when the, um, I don't know if it was that's a when that woman, scene. that woman, it was like a woman I mean, who was, yeah, like was a adult, an adulteress or something. Yeah, they were ready to stone her to death, and then. And so, if you want to look at that, is the exact plane that we're in right now. So the idea of that maxim is, he was, and that doesn't mean that. And someone can read that and be like, "Oh, so we're all sinners. That means we can't call anything out." It's like stop just re stop just reading the letters on the page and actually try to synthesize this thing. People, are, a, a lot of people, and this is something um, Jordan talks about a lot with the deconstructionists and the postmodernists. They can't like they can't get. The, they already have this idea. Well, there's an infinite amount of interpretation, so I'm just going to read this thing in the most cynical and useless way possible, and not try to grab it all in the context of like, power. Try, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And, and put it in a context. Put it in a context of this. It doesn't mean that you can't call out anything. It just, it, it means that he who's he who is without sin may may cast the first stone. So I think when. So when Christ would say something like that, it doesn't mean that you can't you can't ever call out anything. It just means that, like look like look, buddy, like are are you, like the epitome of everything sweet and spice and everything nice? Like are you some type of immaculate being that's like shining, like just benevolent bliss throughout your entire life? Are you are you some type of like who like who are you? It, it, it's it's a it's a heuristic to self-assess yourself first when you have that stone ready in your hand. Oh, Jordan's a piece of shit. He's a patriarchal asshole. When you have that stone in your hand, it's like, wait a minute. What What have you, What are you the same exact person you're throwing this stone at? Or is there a difference between who you're critiquing and who, are, who, who are you are? Yeah, and like the idea of casting a stone, it's like casting a stone, that was to kill the person, right? It was to stone them to death. Yeah. You know, it's like, who, you know, it's one thing to, if I have a issue or a disagreement with somebody, for me to ask questions and say, hey, I'm, you said this, I'm pointing out exactly why you're wrong, and, and that's my issue with you. That's not casting a stone as a, no, this person is an evil, blood-sucking parasite, yeah. da, da 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 That's like, okay, now you're, now you're putting forth condemnation that you are in no place to put forward, you know, and it's like, I, 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 something I struggle with or something that I, um, you know, have it's shadow work that that needs to be done is like sometimes i feel like i it like it 
it is justified to call someone, you know, like, uh, you know, like a child sex trafficker. It's like, this is a subhuman piece of garbage or something like that. Right. Yeah. And it's like, or, you know, or that we talked about this last time. It's like Nazis aren't humans or communists aren't humans. And it's like, that's a mistake. That's a mistake because yeah. you are just as capable of the, uh, the same kind of evil by virtue of the fact that, you know, we're all human beings. It's like, we're all capable of, of great acts of evil, perhaps not to the yeah. same degree for one reason or yeah. another, but you can that. you can you can you can see why a statement like that would, I mean, just infuriate someone who is ideologically ideologically possessed about themselves because they're already operating. It's called moral typecasting. So this is the us versus them mentality. Everyone over here is good, and everyone over there is bad. You can understand how a statement like like Solzhenitsyn the line of good and evil runs to the heart of, of every man. We're all inside of this plane of good and evil. And we have the capabilities to enact either pole we want to. There isn't a there isn't a there isn't a, a, a group of people who are embodying this this evil thing like wait, we are all in this together. And our job and our job is to reorient ourselves so we're pointing towards something good and, and, and not being over here. That that's kind of what this thing is not it's not it's not to go out in it's kind of like towards the stone like oh you're evil like that like, don't like don't like just like calm down a bit like let, let's look at this more so like more sophisticated in a more sophisticated way yeah and, and you can understand how someone would get in furious because it's like that blows up their entire that blows up their entire belief it's like wait i thought i was a virtuous one and we were fighting against this big giant you're telling me that that I share like it, it means something when you realize that you share the same structure, the same being, the same beliefs. The same, not maybe not the same beliefs, but the same biology. You, you you possess the same exact things between your hypothetical enemy and yourself. What's the difference between me and Adolf Hitler? Skin pigment. What's the difference between me and Joseph Stalin, or me or Fidel Castro or Marquise de Sade, the, the worst person who ever existed, ever. Skin pigment, culture. What's the difference between us? On a on a biological level, what is it? Where human beings do this. The only creature when people say, well, a communist can't be human because real humans wouldn't do that. It's like human beings have done the worst things in history. People, people have their whole entire thing flip. It, I mean, this is like the complete. It's like the complete opposite. The only person who could organize mass weapons of destruction is the human being. Are you, are you sick? You gotta watch out for people who say, "Well, I have no. I seen something the other day on Instagram. It made, made me repulse. I didn't even know this person. I want to block them. That's how disgusted I was." He, this person said, "Well, I have no hate in my heart." It's like. You're probably the most hateful person on planet Earth, just by you post, just by you post. Who repressed that hate, and God, God yeah. helps someone who's repressed their hate rather than acknowledges it within them. Sure. Yeah. Sorry for rant. Sorry for uh, ranting there. I just wanted, I wanted, wanted to get that out. No, no, that that it's and it's interesting because you brought up the line through good and evil. Um, you read Viktor Frankl, um, Man Search for Meaning. Yep, the great book. And so I, I have not read the Gulag Ar Archipelago. I, you know, I've listened to obviously Peterson's lectures on it. Um, because that the the idea that the line through good and or the line through good and evil runs through everyone's heart that was Solzhenitsyn. I'm never going to be able to pronounce it right. Solzhenitsyn. Solzhenitsyn. We'll go with that. Uh, <laughs> uh, he he. So he made that observation in the Gulag Archipelago, and then Viktor Frankl made this made the same observation in the Nazi concentration camps. Right when he pointed yeah. out that there were the, I forget what they were called. It was the Jewish prisoners who were helping the nazis that it was sort of like the inmates run the, the asylum. Uh, these uh how was with a z you oh my god you're gonna kill me with this okay capos well, the uh, capos yeah Cap or capos, capos, yeah yeah yep. capos something like that yes exactly and he, and from that observation he pointed out like well wait a second you know it's not like the it's not like all the evils on the side of the nazis and all the good is on the side of the the victims it's like there's intermingling and you know yeah it's like it's, it's 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 a mess to your point it's like you know it's it, the 
communist Russia and Nazi Germany are usually pitted as opposites ideologically. And yet the, in the midst of the worst atrocities, the lesson learned is the same, right? Yeah. No matter where you are, the line for good and evil runs through the individual's heart. And, you know, that's the fundamental takeaway. To your point, it's like someone says, I have no hate in my heart. It's like, yeah, it's like, okay. I, I know. Thank you for posting that. I know who to avoid with the most scrutiny with the rest of my life. Thank you for posting that. Anyway, I want to get out. I want to get to uh, your channel. So uh, can, I, did you, uh, can I um, ask you something cause, or just uh, get your thoughts on something? Because it, it, I thought about it earlier when we were talking about environmentalism. I saw on Twitter someone make a post. Our viewers are probably so confused right now. Like, what are these guys talking about? It's going to be all over the place. But uh, fair. That's fair. I like it. Uh, I like it like that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I saw on Twitter oh, Lord. Um, someone made an uh, interesting observation that it seems like the modern form of religion that the left has sort of fallen into takes two forms, environmentalism and identity politics, right? So like, you know, nature, you know, humans are a cancer on the planet, so we're here to save the planet. That's one yeah. kind of sect. And then the other sect is, you know, our ancestors, like our ancestors and our, and, our, and our lineage is the most important thing. You know, we are products of history, all that. And someone pointed out that like, the two, this could be just a complete, you know, an un, un, unsubstantiated, you know, observation, but it's interesting, is um, two of the common forms of like primitive worship are animism and ancestral worship. And the hmm. idea is like, um, you know, it, religion will manifest itself one way or another. And this idea that, hey, we're protecting the, the holy nature, right? The, the yeah. you know, humans are a cancer on the planet. We're protecting holy nature. Well, that's the, you know, our spirit is in the world. That's the sort of animism type primitive religion. And then ancestry worship and identity politics. It's this, you know, same idea. Whether it's on the right or the left or whatever race is doing the, you know, uh, you know, the like the Aryan Nordic, um, you know, lineage or, you know, whatever it is. It's like, it's interesting that 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 for you know people who claim to be atheistic or whatever those two kind of spring out i don't know if you have any thoughts on that or um um yeah that that sounds a lot like something that i was reading the other day i'm reading a Jung's book um the psychological types in this book and i think this was one of the first books that he because he coined the phrases extroverted and introverted he, he he's the one that coined those two phrases and what the, what this book is essentially doing is breaking down is he done he's doing it so great he he takes you know two figures in history and perhaps you know schisms like that um, when the Eastern Orthodoxy and the uh, whatever the other one is it's a Catholic when they kind of when they kind of switch he's taking um he's taking he's using multiple examples showing the differences between the extroverted thinking extroverted thinking and feeling versus the introverted thinking and feeling. And when you, when you position that animism, an, an, what is it? Animism would be like animism. nature worship. Yeah. 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 And animism, and what was the other one? Nature worship. And so, so yeah, yeah. I, that I, when you just said that thing, that it just got, it just, it just clicked because he used these both examples and how he defines the psyche. And I think he, I think, I think, yeah, I think he really does have it right. The extroverted types and the introverted types. Are they think completely oppositely, and they think. And, but the thing is, is that their their thinking and their psyche it, it complements each other. In each side, what tailors them towards introverted thinking, extroverted thinking, is their compensation of the lack of the other way of thinking. So let me give. So let me give this example. He was referring. He was. He goes back to the Reformation, and he was talking about Martin Luther. I forget the other man that he was that he was thinking about, but this was during the uh, the Calvary tree that we were talking. About. Maybe you don't remember that that term I used. This is when the churches were starting to break and all these denominations were starting. And this is the Catholic tradition, and this is one of the things that Martin Luther was fighting for. I guess you could say is the uh, commune with the the bread of the bread and the wine, like the like the, the actual like the Christ, like tradition communion and what separated martin luther from i'm gonna kill myself for not i'm gonna hate myself for not ruining the other guy's name 
he was pointing out differences with their thinking and why they thought that way. So Martin, he, he classified Martin Luther as the extroverted thinker. And what in the the essence of the extroverted types, which would be the the world worshippers, is that they at the at the root they 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 subordinate themselves to the object. So they they are they are controlled by all like, all inspiring things. So for instance, if I was looking at it like this is why extroverted people who are probably high in openness, high in creativity, they when they will look at art or listen to music, they they infer they 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 subordinate themselves to the subject, like they, they them then the object they they subordinate themselves to the object. Sorry, them the subject they they are they are second. They take a step back. And they subordinate themselves to the art. They subordinate themselves to whatever they're to whatever they're experiencing. And so they're they're less than their value. And this is what this is this is what Martin Luther, this is what caused Martin Luther to want to experience this this this, this tradition of the of the it's called commune with the communion communion with the with the bread the bread chip and the wine yeah. Yeah, he wanted. He wanted. There, there was like a there was discrepancy in the church of whether whether this should be like a literal thing or just a tradition. And one of the things that and this is one thing that Carl Jung pointed out is that he, what Martin Luther did is extroverted people. They are logical by nature, so what they have to do is they have to co- overcompensate for their logical being, and so they have to rely on their relationship to the to the object this, this is, is what this is what makes them subordinate to this is this is why those people think that that humans are here and we're, we're on we're, we're on um what is the word like a stolen land or we're, we're human beings are parasites on obviously that's like the the uh the most like radical version of this but this is what leads to someone thinking like that that we are we're like so for some reason that Earth was here before us, so we need to respect Earth, whatever the hell that means. That that's that's the root of that because those those extroverted people who are high in hopefulness or high high in creativity, they they have to subordinate themselves to the to the object. And on the flip side, I forget the other guy's name. He didn't think of the of the blood of Jesus Christ. He didn't think of that as like a literal thing. He was the he was the introverted thinker. So what the introverted person does is they do the complete opposite. They them the subject, they are they have dominion over the object. So if you're looking at art and you're an introverted thinker, you're not looking at the art because you're just so blown away by it. You're looking at art because Paul wants to look at this art. And I think this I think this thing looks good. You're not doing it for the object you're doing it kind of like for yourself and people think introverted things that oh you don't want to talk to anyone it's like that's like second grade level like this is like this is goes way deeper than just talking to, say, to this people. It's, this sounds like jung's conception i wonder how it maps onto like big five because i think extroversion introversion on big five personality is probably more like the are you more energized by people or things whereas this is this conception of introversion extroversion sounds a little bit different yeah. it's more specific to Jung. yeah and this and and so the other so the flip side of this is you can see that that's the ancestral guilt and that's where the ideology and identity politics come in. You can see how that kind of maps onto introverted thinking because they themselves they have dominion over their objects. And so this is what and when you have and when you when you adopt an ideological framework, you have to break people down to their skin color. You have to break people down to their group identity. So people become widgets. People become you become the you become god of what of what you are discerning, and people become movable widgets. This is that's how that that is how ideo- ideologies like that can spread, because you are you are your your root is your root is emotional. So how you overcome that emotional is with rigid is with rigid logical thinking, and that's what that, that that's that's what that thing is. So when you talked about you know the animism and the other etc. And that sounds exactly like the uh, the schism between introverted and extroverted thinking, and one of the one of the things that that Jung also was talking about is that people aren't just extroverted or introverted; they're, they 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 are more introverted than they are extroverted, or they're less extroverted than they are than they are introverted. 
So that was, that was really uh that was really cool thinking about that. And when we're talking about stuff like this, I was talking with Benjamin Boyce uh, the other day. We had a, I was on this uh, show. I have no idea when it's going to come out. I was going to say I want to watch that. That's awesome. Yeah, I have no idea. I think he's I don't think he said he told me he was backed up. We were we were talking about um personality in the Big Five and how it kind of. I mean, maybe this is like a maybe this is a. Uh, kind of a dumb argument, but it kind of makes it kind of sounds determinist. Like it's like, oh well, Hitler was you know he did that because you know he was just you know high in conscientiousness and he was low in agreeableness. So oh, you, what what do you expect? It's like it kind of makes it sound like you're kind of predestined to whatever you are solely because of your personality. So I can see how you know only breaking people down to personalities can become, can, can become a little deterministic. Like you have like you almost have like no free will outside of your like your little personality box yeah it's uh you have um and i think peterson talks about like wisdom is being able to expand outside of your initial sort of big five personality niche right so if yeah. you're high if you're if, if you're if you're very introverted and you learn to talk to people and you know have conversations and have relationships you know that's it's, it's not a, it's 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 hard to do initially but you start to kind of integrate it into your unconscious and it becomes second nature and and now you've expanded your horizons so to speak yeah. um well and one thing just one more one last thing on this that i think is interesting because you this idea that like individual personality is then reflected in the broader belief systems or the ideologies like the eastern orthodox versus um catholicism um peterson made a point that um you know how obviously like malcolm x and martin luther king sort of kind of represented two yeah. sort of opposing perspectives on like the civil rights movement he pointed yeah. out like well malcolm malcolm x represented the disagreeable end of the ideology and martin luther king represented the agreeable end yeah. and it's not like one was right and one was wrong first off there was a lot of overlap and towards the end of their lives they were i, I think moving closer to the 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 same center um but just in principle the idea that like your personality influences your ideology which then gets abstracted and then other people of similar personality or, or not or you know to, to whatever degree because it once it's abstracted it can be adopted you know in an in a individual way um but that that that's always been of interest to me and that's something that jonathan heights pointed out in his book um i think righteous mind where like jeremy bentham is uh i don't is i think kind of a central thinker in a lot of i don't know the strains of philosophy nearly as well but Jeremy Bentham is an influential thinker in uh, Western thought. And um, Jonathan Haidt made the point that he was likely autistic. And so it's mm -hmm. like he he had a very logical, cold, analytical approach to sort of philosophy or whatnot, which would be different yeah. from, you know, uh, I, I don't know. Who, who is the, uh, is it um, continental philosophy that's more of the intuition and sort of art and all that and whatnot. So it's like, it is interesting to see how yeah an individual's personality could then be abstracted into their belief system and then that belief and then that belief system plays out in the world almost like a personality in some sense yeah, yeah. let's um i want to get to your channel and i want to i want to know so like what what uh what caused you to to make your whole entire channel dedicated to uh jordan peterson and you know this whole entire podcast is kind of on the assumption that they know who jordan is so Perhaps maybe you should give like an introduction to who he is and then how you uh how'd you get started on? Yeah, they would people had, people would have trouble following along if they didn't know who Peterson. Was. <laughs> like, who is this guy? Yeah. Well, first I wouldn't say my channel's dedicated to Peterson. The first, so the, the way I would describe my channel is I, I started it in the middle uh, of the pandemic, um, and I was about six months into therapy at yeah. that point, and I felt like I needed a a creative outlet, but also an outlet to you know, share my thoughts about, hey, you know, you have all of these um, riots occurring, you have people calling each other racists or fascists or all these different names or whatever. And I would see my friends doing it to my other friends and people posting on Facebook all this nonsense. And I was yeah. like, I need, a, I, need a, I, I need an outlet to speak on this. And so the first, I don't know, eight to 10 videos I did, didn't really have anything to do with Peterson explicitly. Obviously, I'm influenced a lot by Peterson. And then later on, it when it became more of a, okay, how do I narrow my kind of interests down and, and do this for, you know, do videos that I'm interested in rather than just feel compelled to do because of the situation we're in. 
it ended up narrowing down to Peterson. Yeah, so Jordan Peterson is a clinical psychologist from Canada who uh, rose to prominence because of uh, some stances he took against some legislation in Canada. And uh, since then, he's had a lot of, he has a huge corpus of work online. A, a lot of it's on YouTube going back um, decades. And he's a, I would say, I think, I would describe his mission as trying to bridge the gap between science and religion. Yeah. Right? That, which is, um, according to him, is what Pia, John Piaget's uh, mission was, right? In, in, in the study of moral development in children. And so, uh, so, yeah, so he has been very influential in sort of rekindling um, common sense wisdom and, and explaining the reasons behind it. So, like, you know, the meme, the Jordan Peterson meme is clean your room, right? It's like, that's, it's like, well, Jordan Peterson says clean your room. And then, you know, the meme is like, well, when your parents tell you to clean your room, it's like, shut the fuck up. But then if Jordan Peterson tells you to clean your room, it's like, oh my <laughs> God, this is rich, deep philosophical insight, right? And uh, I think the reason is, is because- There are reasons for that. Yeah, well, and it's funny because for me, I've always been someone who- You could actually get into that because that, that's actually a good point that you just made. Yeah, and so I've always been someone who values the detail and explanation behind something. Yeah, yeah. Like clean my room, room why? why? Yeah, why? right, so so it's not it's not like clean your room and here's why. It's here's, here is the, here is, uh, a here is a philosophy of reality here is a here is the neuroscience of of you know motivation and positive emotion here all the, here here's the history of comparative mythology here are all these different um, yeah. fields of inquiry and thought brought together wrapped up in one synthesized with each other and then the simplest way to encapsulate the um, knowledge that all of those converging um, sort of uh, areas of thought would provide is clean your room what does that mean take responsibility for your environment and start yeah. you know cleaning up your own space you organize your or you organize your room you start organizing your psyche because you know like if, if you, like in the morning like i now i i lay my clothes out in the morning and i get my uh coffee ready on my on my coffee maker you know each morning and just oh, doing you. that i know it's it and that's a big difference <laughs> because just waking up and then as soon as i wake up i'm now immediately in a structure that's here are my clothes Here's my coffee. Boom, boom. It's yeah. all set up, and I just walk through it. And now I'm, you know, it, 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 you're answering emails on my computer, and, and I'm in my morning routine already, right? So it's like, yeah, it's like, okay, it's common sense. You know, you just, you know, clean your room. It's like, it's the, it's all of the context underneath it that kind of innervates it with its, with its power. And so that's, yeah. so he's become famous for sharing that uh, sort of, I'd say, rekindling that kind of wisdom and providing deep rich insight into k kind of ancient uh you know common sense ideas so to speak yeah so. you know you you, you, uh, you brought up a great point it's like your parents when your parents tell you to clean your room it's like you know up yours but then when jordan says it it, it, some, it somehow makes sense and the thing is it's like that's not what that's not what he it's not what it means and you said it perfectly he gives the he's not telling you why you should clean your room what Jordan is doing is he's he, he's giving he's giving you a like you said he's giving you the he's giving you in multiple multiple different dimensions and obviously like I'm not expecting the average parent to like whip out a, a PSA book and, and, and I'm not expecting that but I think something that parents could if you know if they're interested in doing such a thing or if they have the stomach to watch a Jordan Pearson video one thing that they one thing that they can they can get from him is that cleaning the room is not the point the point is not to have your clean the clean room is not at the top of this pyramid like that's not the point to have a clean room that's not the point and that is that postmodern deconstructionist way of looking at just looking at the letters and saying oh it says clean room there's something in there's something it's not just about that it's giving i'm i'm he's he's giving you a reason he's giving you a reason why your room is dirty. That I think that's what Jordan is doing. Well, separate someone from just giving you words or give or preaching to you, versus someone who is trying to help you become a better person. And no, the question no longer becomes 
why should my room be clean? The, the question is two questions. Why am I, why is my room dirty? And why is someone like me have a dirty room? It fixes the, the use a terrible cliche, it fixes the well instead of the sink. It goes, it goes beneath that. So if you make your highest value, this is something that, uh, this is one of his lectures, is, I think it's one of the best ones. He broke down the Piazzettian va- um, structure of, of yeah, that, that yeah, might be the yeah, most it's, valuable. It's freaking, bro, it's freaking, it's freaking, it's, it, it is, it is so good. So at the top of this, so for people that might not be familiar with this, at the top was be a good person. So, and that be a good person is is essentially clean your room. But so I'm gonna kind of contradict myself here. The point is, it, it would be nice if your room was clean. Let's just say that it would be nice if you were if you were a good person. But the the point here isn't to you know word chop like a like a idiot missing the point. The point here is is to under under understand understand the point. That's what the point is. Is to say. What, what does that mean? That's in the abstract. The abstract is to have a clean room. That's the abstract. To be a good person, there isn't like a good person for Paul and a good person for, you know, Tom and a good person. Like a good person is a an ambiguous, kind of like a, a flip-flop it's label. Or something, something. Idea, yeah. something, but it, ha- it has to be like that in order for someone, and it can't be too abstract to the point where nobody can do it. That's Nietzsche, the death of God, it just fit it off in, in the space. It's not the point to have a, a clean room with not a not a crumb or anything out of order. Too much order. That's the totalitarian state. You don't want that. The point is to work up and build up these smaller these these smaller micro motor, motor outputs to and, and it and it goes it, it slightly goes up and it keeps progressing up and toward the point where you do have a clean room and you are a good person. So how does that break down? So if you're talking to some, yeah, go ahead. Say that that visualization and what you're describing, it's like, it's a visual representation of the solution to the mind body problem. It's like yeah. you have you have your I'm a good person. What does it mean to be a good person? Well, a good person would be a good parent, a good citizen, and a good you know plant. I don't know, uh, member of the community or something like that. Okay, what does it mean to be a good parent? Uh, it would mean to yep. raise your child correctly. What does it mean to raise your child correctly? It teaches them how to, uh, you know um uh play with other kids well how do you teach them to play with other kids it's like okay well you go to the park and then you kind of like point then you get that thing you get that go to the park that's what it is so now you're in action it's like okay what does it mean when you're at the park well now you like tell your kid to go play with the other i don't know i don't have kids you know this is (laughs) yeah not yet you know you you encourage your kid to go kind of kind of push him out go hey go play for a little bit or whatever it's okay that you just went from the abstraction the highest abstraction that you know is almost too amorphous to conceptualize and then you chain it down to the specific motor action, and that's a, that's an internally consistent hierarchy, and that that Piagetian hierarchy, yeah, that, that's yeah. the hierarchy of values, so to speak. That's um, yeah, you you ex- you explain that perfectly, and I think what a lot of people get they get mixed up and they get and they get lost is because what I think a lot of people when they take that approach, like this hypothetical parent where we've been bashing for the last twelve minutes, they say clean your room, clean your room, clean your room, do this, you get good grades. Be a, be a good person. Don't smoke weed. They give them these these platitudes, and they don't give and they don't lay out the whole entire the structure of how you were saying. Contextualize they in that hierarchy exactly. exactly. And, and and when you when you were going you were going in that in that it, uh, essentially what it was was that that infinite you can you can it's an infinite re- regress. You can ask well what is this well why should I do this or why should I do that? And the and the average person doesn't have the I mean, the average IQ, I'm not trying to sound condescending here, the average IQ is 98 in the United States. The average person isn't isn't doing this infinite regress, this deduction in their head. Well, what does it mean to go to It's not even just a matter of IQ, too. It's a matter of like, well, yeah. some, you know, some people have like lives and, you know, they have two jobs. Yeah, to take care of kids. Exactly. exactly. Okay. I said, well, what's a good person? Okay, well, well yeah, well, to, you know, take your son to the park. Well, you know, why should I do that? You know, people, they're not, they don't have the, most people and they don't, they don't even have the will to even go deep to go deep into those questions. Yeah, or then so like, why should I even like care self, about? It's, or it's like self-evident. Yeah, it's like if you've got kids, it's like, well, I don't really need to you have a philosophy of why it's meaningful to take care of my kids. It's like yeah. it speaks for itself. I've got a biological imperative. 
and that's fine. And it's like, yeah, that's and that it's that's sort of the pragmatic base under underneath Peterson, which I think is so valuable. It's like it's it's so rooted in just like, look, we're alive and we have, you know, we want we we're tr- we want we met, you know we need to not die. We need to be social. We we've got some basic biological imperatives, and we can start from there and kind of abstract out instead of going well postmodern. Well. You know, technically, life has no uh, meaning, and uh, everything is just purely a social construct, and everything is subjective, and therefore all action is, you know, irrelevant and or 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 or, or relative, you know, in terms of value, and it doesn't really matter. It's like, dude, yeah, yeah. it's 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 the hyper intellectuals. Um, what would you say, self masturbatory game of just like, well, yeah. let's let's, ra- let's explain why life doesn't have any meaning. It's like, okay, put your hand on a stove. A hot <laughs> stove, and you will immediately find the meaning of life in that moment, which is to take it off. And it's like you abstract from that idea. How do you avoid suffering? How do you end needless suffering? Well, you pursue meaning, and you find meaning in all that. So it's like, yeah, me, 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 yeah. I was on a podcast the other day, and we were talking about that hyper <laughs> intellectual masturbation. Use a better term to me. We were talking about that word chopping thing that I think a lot of intellectuals do. We're going to put an idea to you. I want you, I want to know your opinion on this. I actually think I've been thinking about this. Like, what causes people to get in the, into that like that word chopping, that like endless question? Asking, what what causes people to get into that, like critical theory? And when you just break everything down, get a sense of what you have to what you have to buy into first when you when you get into something like this. You have to kind of devalue everything and say, well, well let's, let's look at this through a critical lens. Let's look at let's look at physics through the lens of this. It's like you kind of kind of devalue everything until where nothing nothing means anything. You are the that's the basis of that introverted thinking. I'm the subject and I am looking down at everything else, holding a red pen and I'm just going to criticize everything. Everything is up for criticism. It's like what are you standing on? Right. I think part of the motivation is that theory that uh worldview it's a powerful rhetorical strategy so there's a ruthlessly pragmatic aspect of that is hey here's a powerful rhetorical tool and argument i now have where i can basically any claim that anyone makes i have now uh, algorithm for deconstructing it and then substituting yeah, yeah. it for whatever i personally feel like and want to believe and they, like, what are you doing well right why, why are you doing that? that right and 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 that's that's the whole like kind of going back to the idea of like well everyone's religious it's like well even though you eat like even though you think that you're just deconstructing things and seeing things for what they are you are you have to replace it with something if you say well life doesn't have any meaning i've you know i've 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 intellectually come to the conclusion that life has no meaning it's like okay well what so if if your friend is on drugs would you just recommend that he keeps doing drugs you know if, if you're in pain because you just you know sleep till two every day and don't yeah. have any goals well, in life. Not? It's like well, it doesn't matter. It's like you, you, you know, if if you if they, if people took that deconstructionist attitude, you know, towards the if they embodied it, yeah. Well, if they embodied it, yeah, then they just die. And yeah, they'd like, be well, dead. Yeah. 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 Well, and and that's I that's I do. You know, people that that like you know the the most obvious example I think is like you know the sort of hedonistic you know world you know path of just doing drugs and just you know, existing pure in the moment and thinking life has no meaning. It's just whatever yeah. is in the moment is what I'm going to pursue to the fullest. It's, it's like horrible. people do die uh, like uh, often. And I, in, and I think that is the embodiment of that. Like, well, every, nothing really matters. So why not get the best high I can feel in the moment? Right. It's, it's like, and you know, drugs are powerful and it's like, you know, what's the, what's the thing that Jordan Pearson says? It's like, it doesn't confuse me why people do drugs. What confuses me yeah, is yeah. why people don't do drugs all the time. It's like, why are you not <laughs> nose deep in cocaine all the time? It's like, yeah, it, it, it's 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 powerful. So you know that that rhetorical tool allows you to basically justify your most base instincts. And I think you know whether or not people yeah. admit that to themselves, that's what's happening. I wanna. Um, you posted another. You posted a video a couple. Yeah, it was it was last month, and uh, I watched it and. I just I totally loved it, and I think it's something really important. So the video is called "Why Intellectuals Are So Afraid of Debate." I really want to talk about this, and I want to talk about another video after this one. So we see in a lot of people in culture today how, especially with the whole science stuff, the scientism that's been spreading rapidly, 
well, this is settled. You know, we're not debating that. Like, we're not going to debate this. We're ha- we have our we have our golden calves. We're not we're not going to we're not going to talk about that. I want to know why do you think? I sense I want you to make that video again, but just in this <laughs> in this interview. But why do you think that some in, some intellectuals, if you want to call them that, don't don't like debating? Because you would you would you would because to a regular person you would think okay so if you if you have this position and you're claiming that you're right why wouldn't you take advantage of the opportunity to talk with this other person and perhaps know something that maybe you don't know I'm kind of giving away the answer now but why wouldn't you take why wouldn't you want to prove your position to be true don't you want to don't you want to take advantage of this moment to be like yeah you guys all thought that guy was right well here's ten reasons why he was completely wrong. Why wouldn't you want to take advantage of that? I think. Well, so why, why do you think they're scared to? Why? Why? What do you think they don't want to debate for? That, that's my question. So I think there's a couple legitimate, or at least have you know, in some sense, are decent objections to. Well, we're not going to debate the science. So one is is, um, like, you know, if you're if you're talking about complex scientific issues, there is an element of well, you know, if it's if it's a mass audience who doesn't have scientific training, you kind of have to v- break things down and start from first principles, and it's it's easy for someone else to kind of manipulate the technical language yeah. in such a way or whatever. So that's okay. That's one perspective. Um, you know, and my criticism of that is it's like, well, hold on. If it's on the, like, let's say it's on Joe Rogan, right? This was the example I used in the video is Steve Coonan and Andrew Dessler, I believe. And Dessler is, you know, I don't want to say a climate alarm. I think he, what would you say? Steve Coonan thinks that the current climate alarmism is overblown. And Andrew Dessler doesn't think that. He thinks that, you know, climate change is, you know, uh, existential threat needing a, in need of immediate action at a large scale. Yeah, and Dessler yeah, yeah. said, I'm not going to debate Kunin because the science has already been subtle. He says the science has already been debated in the scientific system. It's like, okay, what does that mean? Yeah, what is, the what si- that yeah, yeah. It was like, we're talking about peer review. It's like, first off, you know, it's interesting because he didn't even he didn't even say that Steve Kunin was wrong. He was just saying he was only presenting one part of the story. So it's not like Steve Kunin wasn't yeah. using peer reviewed studies or something like that. But the like my my perspective is if you're going to if you're going to have a conversation with millions of people watching some proportion of those people are going to have expertise you know many tens of thousands of people are going to be able to decode the sort of the scientific language it's like they're serving as the parameters right it's like you know if 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 yeah you can take clips out of context and stuff and all that but it's like for people who genuinely don't know and are willing to like i you know i don't know much about climate science right? i've never read a climate study you know the the I do, I do believe the earth is warming. I don't think anyone disputes that. The question is how much of um, the change is due to human involvement. And Kunin suggested it was some, you know, five to 10% or something like that. Dessler said it was 100%. It's like, that can't be right because the earth is, you know, been climate has been changing since, you know, the earth has been around. So the idea that it's 100%, it's like, you know, so I'm confused, you know, I, I'm conf- I would like to see, I would like to evaluate two people who have different perspectives conversing with each other. Because, yeah, if you believe you're right, what are you afraid of, right? Like, you know, I get that there's an element, like debate is a, there is like a skill, so to speak. You know, you have to know, you have to come yeah. prepared, you have to know what you're talking about. And I, like, I get if, if Dessler thinks he's not, you know, qualified to do that, okay he, he didn't say that he could admit, if he had admitted that i would respect that he could say like look i'm not used to getting pushed back immediately whatever da 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 but but if you're confident enough to to be willing to dismiss someone because he said that well steve coonan worked for i think it was bp which is true he, steve coonan worked for um the the uh, energy industry i don't know which i think it was bp as like a lead scientist whatever and that's hey yeah. that's reasonable criticism like we should be skeptical of someone who would you know may have financial interests in putting the different perspective put forward. It's like, okay, go grill him on that. Ask him to his face. And if you really believe that the reason that he's putting forward this information that you disagree with is motivated by, um, you know, greed or something like that, then if you're willing to make that claim, you know, publicly, uh, you know, you better be able to make that claim to people's face. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. And and one other thing, there is an element, I do get the idea that like, 
even just being willing to debate with someone about an idea gives an idea a certain level of legitimacy, just a priori. Right. And I understand, like, so if someone wanted to debate me about, because, you know, I've done debates on different issues, whatever. If someone to debate <laughs> yeah, me, I've seen. Yeah, I know. They, yeah, they, they're fun. Um, and, but if someone we wanted can, to. Just, if we have time, we'll get to the, when you debated that, 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 uh, that anarch, the anarchist, the capital. Yes. Power. Yes. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> those are fun. But if yeah. someone emailed, I've gotten emails and, you know, people just say, hey, could talk about I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. But like, let's say someone emailed me and said, hey, I want to debate whether or not murder should be legalized. It's like, okay, I am 100% confident that if I if I sat down and had a debate with someone about that, I, you know, it would be an easy um, dub. Yeah, yeah. It'd be, it's like you're, you, if you're pro, we should legalize murder, just bar none. Like I, I like I, I'm so confident that I can sit down and you know destroy that perspective that I'm not like I haven't been asked about legalizing murder. Maybe I would do it now because I'm saying it and I'm you know I'm saying I'm as confident <laughs> as I am. So I need to prove it's that for certain people. Yeah, but the idea is. <laughs> At a certain like, there's a certain level of like, if, if you and I are trying to have a conversation, you know, we're trying to figure something out, we have to put parameters around the conversation. Like, yep. I'm not good. Like, if someone wants to come here and say, yeah, murder should be legalized, or you know, like, I think we should just destroy humanity. That that should be our goal. It's like, okay, we're not even operating in the same value structure. I'm not interested in engaging with you. And so I get the idea from someone like Dessler, who says, like, look, you know, I, cl climate change is the biggest issue. It, you know, it could destroy humanity to even entertain a debate about it would legitimize a side that I think is so backwards that, you know, it would be harmful. It's like, I get that in principle, if that's what the data suggested, but given that there is so much pushback and that the people offering the pushback are willing to have a debate, but the other people aren't, it makes it really seem like actually the yeah. people in the possession of the truth are the ones who are wanting to have the debate and the people running from the debate are the ones who are uh, well, you know, the, uh, some of this data is shaky and, you know, there's also like, you know, we also are using climate change to advance like racial justice. So there's other things going on. And, you know, I don't want to admit that totally, but da da da. it's like, OK, th that's where all this stuff gets confusing. So, yeah, yeah. that's like that sounds yeah, that sounds like the I've been seeing a lot. I've been looking into this a lot. This uh, these uh, this idea of Philia and Nakia versus Philia Sophia. That's for Reiki, sure. right? Yeah, that's that's for Reiki, you know. And or at least that's what he. I, it's probably terms older his. than he is. Yeah, but he, he yeah. focuses on that. One is the so Philia Sophia would be the the genuine. That's the love of wisdom. That's where the word philosophy comes from. And that, and I think, and and those two concepts have been abstracted as almost as adjectives, like and how you're kind of conducting yourself. I'm conducting myself in a Philia Sophia way. So that means I am generally want to. I'm gen I genuinely want to seek knowledge in the pursuit. I, I know I want to pursue truth so that I can synthesize that as knowledge. So in, in, a, in a good faith, so we can progress towards something, something better. That's, that's what Father Sophia is. And I think people like, his last name was Kuhn or whatever. Kuhnin, yeah. Kuhnin is the Kuhnin, one disputing yo. the degree to which climate change is, is as big of an yeah. issue as it's made out to be. I think people and people who who say you know the science is settled and we're not going to do this and you know, all those people and, and kind of de, de legitimizing people's other people's views without speaking to them, I don't necessarily think and it's something deeper than that because you you brought up a good point uh, you 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 steel man positions a lot I don't think you even realize that I think you're you're tailored to steel man someone's position before you just crap on it. I'm not sure if you picked that up. But no, I, that, you do. Yeah, it's it's that's I, I, something you're practicing. Yes, I definitely and yes. Sometimes I forget, and sometimes I just go, yeah. Well, these fucking idiots are just dumbass. Yeah. Dude. Okay. That's yeah, and that me, and that grace and that the reason I bring that up because that grace is part of your Philia Sophia nature because you genuinely want to get towards a a better point, and I think people, a lot of science like rigorous scientific people don't understand that and Jung said this too in psychological types he said and this is coming from Carl Jung not me so I'm just a messenger here so don't shoot me he said verbatim science is another theory science is just another theory of the way of knowing of a way of experiencing like that guy said that like him someone who is someone who is entrenched in that science is just another thing there is no this is at the top or this is at the top 
science is a very specific way of looking at the world. And if you want to really get into it, 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 is, it is a not just a very specific way of viewing things, but it's also a very new way of looking at things. A lot of people don't like looking at that one either. So the scientific method has been around for, what, like less than 500 years, like a real rigorous scientific way of looking at the world? What, what has led us up to this point? And not to say that, you know, we should go off in the Neanderthal wisdom for the rest of eternity. I'm not saying that, but the, what has led us up to thinking of things in a pure scientific manner is that underlying narrative. It's a narrative, something Jung also talked about. It's a, it's a, it, is, it is a narrative. I want to use these tools, alch alchemical narrative. I want to use these tools this science. I want to use this, this 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 knowledge over here. I want to use these 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 things these things I've collected, and I want to organize them in a systematic way so that I can pursue this in good faith. Because you have to have good faith if you're pursuing science. That's the oath you take. The Hippocratic oath. I'm doing this. I'm going to cause no harm. That's a statement of virtue. It's a statement of, of, of value. It has nothing to do with science. It's, it's, it's embedded in, it's embedded into that. So that this is the narrative you're acting out. In the what is on the surface level is this you know this uh, this dude in a white coat and he and with, with letters next to his name and he thinks he's like a like a, another god or something. I'm maybe I'm being a little cynical here, but no, it's on purpose. So that is kind of what the scientific way is is being conceptualized now. People think these guys are like wizards or something. They are just people doing their job. When Fauci well, says are, I am science, people, yeah. yeah, like I am science, like fuck you, dude. Bow before him. Doing, yeah. doing, <laughs> they're doing their jobs the same exact the same exact way a Bible thumping conservative would view every single thing around him through a through a theological lens. Like, oh, this is the end times. Like, yeah, we, yeah, guy, we've been saying that for you know forever. Like, he's he's doing the same the same exact thing. Yeah. So these, and not, I'm not trying to sound relativistic here, but. These are these are these are very specific ways of looking at the world. One is through ancient and collected wisdom that has look at through it through it through an evolutionary sense. We were here. We have we haven't burnt and exploded ourselves. So ha obviously something that we did was right. Something that we did. Which which religion has lasted the longest? Which thing? Which customs? Which traditions have have got us here? Or are these these are the things these are the behaviors these are the these are the adaptations that we have adapted to throughout thousands of years. How the hell did we get here? There's something someone said someone someone brought up something about blue zones. I think it's my friend. I was on my friend um what's that what the hell is his name? I forgot <laughs> I forget I'm terrible with names, you can tell by now. He was talking about blue zones. What blue zones are are they're kinda of like a, they're diagrams to to describe what cultures have survived the longest. And what what they have done, and what, what what those specific cultures do to last the longest, and what it's like a it's like a three it's like a Venn diagram. It has like their 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 behaviors, their their diets, and their and their and their culture. It's like it's all encapsulated in the one thing. And one one of the things that he said was, it was their relationships, it was their their their, their dynamic relationships between other people, and how they conducted themselves. Though, though, that is one of the things, that's one of the main drivers that, that one of the predictors that will predict a civilization's longevity is a relationship between other people. That, that, where, where do you, where do you fit the scientific method in that? Sure. Yeah. And what, yeah. I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious what they would say about something like that. So the reason I say that is because they, these they're they're equally in in people and you know, I can I can see why people someone would hate Jordan Peterson because he's saying, you know, he's trying to bridge these these two completely antithetical ways of thinking. He's trying to bridge what 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 makes these two things. Why can we conceptualize these two things as some as different things? And what is what is what is in between this? Are they different things? Are they the same thing but just in a different way? Who knows? But anyway, back to my point. I can't really really remember my point now. But yeah, anyway, so people who just think in this purely rationalistic way, it has its utility. I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't, you know, like, you know, screw bacon and, you know, the whole science. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we, it's, it's a specific way of thinking, and we should respect it. The same way someone thinks, you know, some guy sat under a tree and became 
a god. We should, I mean, we shouldn't really respect it the same way, but we should just, we should understand why they got there. So that that's just one. But the only reason why I think that is because I have a folly Sophia nature. Someone who doesn't respect that, they have a folly and the key in nature. They want, they don't, they don't believe in the, a debate is not, that's like, that's, that's like the circus. The, a debate is the, is a dialogos. That's what a debate is. It's two people. Jordan talks about this a lot. Hockey players don't come to the game with a basketball. They all come with their hockey sticks. Hockey players don't, you know, they all agree. Like, is, it, is this a competition or are we cooperating? Which one is it? It's both. That is, because we both generally, yes, we want to, it, it is a competition inside of a cooperation. So we want to win. This is another Piagenian argument. We want to win. We don't just want to win this game. We want to win this game throughout the, the sets of games. We want to be able to, we're worried about the narrative. Sets of behaviors is a narrative by definition. We care about the narrative here. We care about how we conduct ourselves throughout the world. Back to that blue zone diagram. We care about how we're how our relationships to one another. So I'm not going to beat your head with my stick in this one game because that is going to, in a in a purely evolutionary sense, that's that's going to limit my chances of playing another game because now I become a target. If I'm going to beat your head over the stick in the first interaction, why would anyone else want to play with me two or three days down the line? Doesn't make any sense. Right. So when you, so when you, when you, when you, so, when, so, so, so the reason why the reason I, why I, I say all this is because someone who is a folly and the key a thinker, they want to win. That is that person that beats the that beats the person in the head with a stick, because they only care about they care about this right now. They care. They're clinging on to that knowledge, and that, that that's not what it's for. Now knowledge is the tool, but the truth the truth is the shield. The truth is what is what allows us to to express knowledge, to express these facts in good faith so that we can progress towards something better. If you just want to hold on to your knowledge and like a vice, no, I'm not going to debate this. It's, it's settled. I'm not going to do it. That's, that's what you're holding on to. It. You're grabbing on to it. It's your, it's your idol. That knowledge becomes right. your idol. That, that, yeah, that becomes the the axiom in which your scientific endeavor is now grounded in it's okay it's not I, the genuine pursuit of truth it's it's this science has been subtled and so now that supersedes the genuine pursuit of truth so to speak yeah. because yeah. They, they they believe it's the same thing that's a good point that's interesting yeah yeah it yeah it replaces the that the the ethical uh the the, the philosophia ethical claim at the bottom of it with something yeah. Yeah. static yeah, because you know, I was, I was, I was reading. Um, yeah, I was reading the. I, I try to read. I'm trying, trying to start reading the the Bible more because I, I could. Every time I hear people talk about it, like it's just you can't just deny whether you believe in God or not, and you can't deny the, uh, just the, utter. What's the word I'm looking for? How it just pierces the, through the influence yeah, it's that it's the canonical text. It's like Bible yeah, influence. Yeah, it's like this a, thinker who influenced this thinker. And yeah, it just spreads yeah. outward until it just saturates the whole modern line of thinking. <laughs> and, I, and I was thinking about this is like one of the most arcane, ar archaic stories: the, the the Adam and Eve. Like, and why were these two people naked and they talked to some snake, and the snake told them to to eat this fruit, and he said, "Yea, shall be gods." And when they ate the fruit from they ate the tr the, the fruit from the tree of knowledge. And I'm trying to understand this. I'm like, what like what the hell is going on right now? Why is the serpent talking to them? Why is the serpent talking, period? And why is that why is this why is this a tree of knowledge? Why isn't the tree of truth? Why isn't the why isn't the tree of virtue? Why is the tree, yeah. tree of tree of power? Yeah. Why isn't the tree of, of, of prosperity? Why is it the tree of knowledge? In there is an implicit separation between truth and knowledge, and there's another verse I'm going to talk to. I'm going to talk about in a second. I want to know your opinion on it. There's a difference between truth and knowledge. Like we have, we have to get the, we have to get this settled out. And one of the, one of the ideas that you know, I'm, I'm trying to think about, you know, why the, it's like a serpent saying, "Yea, shall be gods." When you get this, when you get this knowledge, 
And this ties back to our Sophia Sophia Fali and Nikita argument. Because they weren't they they were going against what God was telling them to do. They said don't go to that tree. You can't obtain this knowledge. And the serpent was telling them, You can get this, and you will become a God once you once you get this knowledge. And when I understood this, my it, it clicked in it clicked in my head that they were this is the this is the man this is the precondition of the manifestation of corruption and evil. The acquisition of knowledge outside of a moral framework is by definition the, the precondition of evil. That's what it is. I'm gonna get this knowledge outside of a moral framework, what God was telling them to do, and I'm gonna use this knowledge as a tool outside of a moral framework. Your, your knowledge outside of a moral framework is rubbish. What good is it if it's not in a moral framework? Right. You know how many people, you know, let's say we could just exterminate euthanasia. This happened, this was Acton, Acton T4, I believe, during the Second World War. This was something that Hitler implemented. We're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're gonna euthanize all the mentally challenged people, the elderly, we're just gonna get rid of them. And it was actual, actual campaign. And they were doing it for, for the regime. That's a scientific fact. We'll look at all the positive aspects we're going to get. We're going to get rid of these people. We're going to purify Germany. Yeah, go, 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 Germany. That is knowledge outside of a moral framework. And you can trace you can trace that through centuries of of instances like that have happened. P Peterson uses the example of Soviet scientists tried to synthesize. I think it was Ebola and smallpox. And Ebola is not that contagious, but very deadly and smallpox is very contagious and less deadly so if you synthesize them you would create a super bug and the idea is like well scientifically speaking know. why the fuck not you know like what, 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 the, the only reason that you would not do that is because there's some uh, super ordinate ethical principle that would say well maybe we shouldn't just synthesize you know disease yeah. for the sake of because you could say well hey it's research why not why not try it out you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, why not and, and if a purely scientific perspective which is knowledge for knowledge's sake with no boundaries with no ethical bound because ethics are just you know right common. right and some and someone would someone would listen to this and be like you guys sound so stupid why would we do that that would that would be bad it's like where where are you where are you getting that leap from that it would be what do you mean by bad it would be get it would be bad why how where are you getting that from it's self-evident because it's so deeply rooted in our culture. Like, well, obviously, we're not going to do things. Like like, oh, yeah. yeah. People. It's like, yeah, well, so, and how do we get there? Yeah. And killing many people was the norm for most of human history. So the fact that you think it's self-evident, like, well, we don't want to do something that would kill a lot of innocent people. It's like, actually, that's what literally governed human history for tens of thousands, yeah, yeah. hundreds of thousands. And you're, and you're, 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 you're like one, you're like one tenth of the way from, you know, all the commandments. So, you know, go, go you. Wow, that was a good exchange. Let's uh, let's uh, let's let's um, let's end it here. How long have we been talking? We've talked for a minute. <laughs> I want to end it here. Um, you know, you make all these videos and you and you dissect people so good, and you you do good justice with them. You try, and we just talked about it. You steal man people's positions. You don't try to like. You're not you're not look. You're not trying to win. You're in a Philia Sophia framework, and that's you know that's just that's great. That's perfect. I want to. I want. I want you to do that to yourself now. So, what? What? What could someone not? What? 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 What is something that you think that you are that you're doing wrong? Like, what? What, what is it? What is it? What is a? What is a good critique of of yourself? Why would someone be? I guess anyone could really do this, but you know, what? What do you? What do you think are some things that you get wrong? That's a good question. Um... I don't know that I haven't fully articulated my goal in when I make videos, right? Part of it is, you know, yeah, like, what are you, what are you trying to do with this? Well, that, that's the thing. So, you know, like my, the way that I describe it is like, well, I'm trying to, part of what I'm doing is it's a couple different goals. Part of what I'm doing is when I make a video and I do like a video essay type thing and I put all these different lectures and whatever, and I synthesize it. That's like that that just helps me 
solidify it for myself, right? If, if I have, to, if I can explain it in a way that articulates to other people, then it's, it's solidified for me. But then the other thing is like, well, I'm trying to grow my audience. I'm trying to get bigger. I'm trying to get, you know, uh, you know, more uh, notoriety and all that and, and have my voice be able to have more of an impact and presumably use the information I know, both my own personal experience and then synthesized with the Peterson stuff and all that. And then, but as far as like, well, what am I doing wrong? It's like, well, you know, at like sometimes, like, am I being cheap when, I, like, if I make a, vi- like, I, you know, I'll do videos that are critical of certain, like, uh, online figures that it's not like a steel man of their position, so to speak. It's, it's more of a, it's satirical. Like, it's not, it's not, di- it's not dishonest. I'm not lying. Like, I'm, 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 sh- I'm, I'm highlighting the hypocrisy, but it's not like, but that, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a form of ridicule, which, I don't think is always wrong. I think there is room for ridicule, right? Like if someone has an idea that's so outside of like the legalizing murder, it's like, if you and I are trying to figure out something serious, I'm not going to listen to someone who I'm not going to bring in as an honest conversation. Someone who's like, well, I want to legalize murder because life is no value. It's like, we're not even on the same page. Right. So I think murder for just some people. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Who I don't like. Right. 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 Um, but to, it's like, what is the biggest mistake I'm making or, or, you know, what am I doing wrong? I think my biggest issue is. Someone can say, why don't you ever talk about, you know, AOC or why don't you ever critique, uh, you know, people? Well, yeah. Well, there's a lot of things I could do. I guess you're critiquing who you, who you want, who you want to. Yeah. Oh, I'm definitely, well, I ha- yeah, of course I'm, I'm cherry picking what I'm, 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 I, I I think focusing, narrowing too much and thinking that like, well, what's going on in the, in the spaces that I'm operating in are more valuable than, than what's going on. You know, like I always, I have, there's an element of hypocrisy always like, well, wait a second, how can I get up on these? Supposedly I'm coming on this, on my channel and making videos, bringing attention to issues that I regard as important because, you know, these issues like harm people. So like, you know, I talk a lot about like transgender ideology and how that, you know, it, it can be very backwards and it can harm the people it's, it's supposed to help and all that. Yeah. yeah you know or or like if i talk about like racism and stuff and systemic racism and all this or whatever and it's like well wait a second why you know i don't do as much volunteer work as i could um mm-hmm. I, I spend money you know foolishly i don't give as much money as i could to charity and it's kind of like well what right do i have to come on here and make these videos and proclaim you know like, hey these are these issues that are that need to be solved and yet in my own actions i'm not doing as much as i could you know and that that's a big source of why well, aren't I just a hypocrite, right? Should this should be the last thing that I'm doing, right? Put my own house in order, control what's in front of me. Right. And, and yeah. I, you know, I, I do a number of things outside of the YouTube channel that are, um, you know, sort of pointing to the same goal of, you know, how to address these big issues and, and the polarization and all that, but I definitely could do more. And, you know, so there's a part of me that's like, it's unearned to come on here and be like, God, you know, this, this, and this are, you know, all these issues are a bad thing or, you know, all these issues cause, cause, you know, problems for people. And yet I'm here making a video when I could be out doing something that would actually have more of an impact for, you know, individuals in my own community or something like that. Right. And it's like, I think that's the biggest source of that. If, I, if I'm doing anything wrong, it's that it's I'm I'm I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm mis I'm misjudging how much how much value there is in these videos versus what I could be doing in my free time. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually because you know you have a really great channel and you're totally objective with your with your not totally analysis. objective analyses. Try, well, I, I mean, you're you're better. Yeah, you I mean you're I mean it, it's pretty objective. Like when when you really watch them, it's like well he's really speaking for each side. He's not like it's not like I, I don't. I, I never, I never, I can never assume which one you're going to take when I'm watching. Yeah. Sure, depends on the video. Sometimes, and, and, sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. yeah. Some, with the satire, you know, like, yeah, I'm yeah. An idiot, but um, and I, I see it growing, and I see, I, I, I see you, you know, in the future, perhaps, being one of these people who have like your, like your own articulated idea of, of what, of what it is you think that people how we should conduct ourselves, and one of the things that I, I think I, I can foresee is you being put in that you kind of falling into Jordan's trap where you're trying to bridge you're, you're you're taking I mean what you're doing is you're you're acting out the redeemer archetype which I mean really essentially you the are, onyx stage that's what you yeah, yeah you're, you're, bridging, you're, bridging, you're bridging people together and you're and people who do that sort of thing you you guys are 
huge targets. And you're bringing people together who have different who have different opinions about things, and you're seeing you know you're, you're still maintaining the other person's position, and you're still maintaining their position, and you're coming towards this this synthesis and all these this great slew of videos you have, and you and your people who do the who who like kind of centralize their whole entire or central like their brand around that like you you're gonna you're really gonna be hit with that. Well, he's just like a he's like a right wing propagandist. He's just propagating for this particular side. So he's just completely biased. He does all these videos for his for his own sake, and you know you can really say that about about any person. But I think that's something that uh, I I I think you're you're going to get hit with that. But I and I, and I actually because I, I want you to I wanted you to kind of say and get and get that out. Like you know I I could be doing this, and sometimes I don't want to make these videos. Like you're 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 aware of, you're aware of that. So um. That was it. I just wanted to know. It's funny, just this last point you bring up, but, you know, being a target or whatever. It's like, and we talked about this previously. Right now, people who are in the center are considered right wing because the culture yeah. has moved left, right, for one reason or another. But 10 years from now, when the pendulum swings back. Yeah, we're going to be the radical leftists. Exactly. We're Yeah. This this guy was, uh, you know, um, saying that people who vote for Bernie Sanders are, you know, are, aren't uh, aren't communists or whatever. It's like, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. The one, I did a video on um, uh, certain medical procedures uh, relating to a certain virus uh, that occurred in the world uh, over the past two years, and and that was it. It was before that. It was before that uh, particular medical procedure had been released to the public. You know, we, they had worked on it for several years and. Um, I'm, I'm referring to something that, you you know, a syringe in your arm and, and all of that. I don't want to uh, put any keywords that'll get flagged or anything. Yeah. Um, but I made a video saying like, hey, don't criticize people who are skeptical of like certain medical procedures. Like there's a valid reasons for it. The Tuskegee experiments, uh, you know, uh, the fact that like pe- there, there are downsides to some to medicine some of the time. Tylenol kills like 150 people a year or something like that. So to, to, to pretend like, well, these things are purely safe and you're a complete moron if you have any skepticism, it's like, that's wrong, right? And it's like, to fire in the queue. You know, and it's funny because it's funny because when I made that video, the skepticism was on the other side because it was like, well, I'm not going to trust any medical procedure that was developed under Trump. It's like, okay, and now turns it's now, yeah. you know, it's sort of flipped. So it's interesting that like, you, you know, I always I think back to that of like that was the right move on my part to you know even though it would have been easy to just go oh, of course these you know anti uh, you know people who don't want to get you know certain syringes in their arm well these people are dumbasses and all that so like, that would have been easy because yeah. that was sort of the norm but yeah. I think that was wrong or that would have been could be pretty hard to put you in a box within the next few years I really see your channel like growing man I I, I, could re- I really see that this this thing is gonna take off soon maybe it'll happen soon. And if people are going to try so hard to get you in a box, and they're not going to be able to do it. Yeah. Well, the, I can't. I can't wait. I can't. I just can't. I can't wait to see it. It's well, you know what? Funny. To your point about the box, the box that I'm most, um, I feel like I would, it would be most easily to, to box me in, so to speak, is because you know I make a lot of videos about Jordan Peterson. It's like, and it's funny because even in, in this conversation, um, you know, not that this is your fault. This is something that I'm putting out there, and this is how it's being received. Is like my channel is centered around Jordan Peterson. It's like, that's not really, I don't want, it's not centered around Jordan Peterson. It's centered around yeah. <laughs> my idea. And, but, but for the amount of videos I make, it's all, you know, it's what, uh, at least one out of one out of two are going to have Jordan Peterson in the title. So it's very yeah. easy for me to think like, well, well, it's a good well, SEL strategy. Yeah. Or like, am I, am I the Jordan, like I'm on the mouthpiece for Jordan Peterson. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to get hit with that one. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, you know, um, uh, like, having been so influenced by his ideas like you know in some sense like okay I, i'm not gonna have a problem you know well this guy's jordan peterson fans like yeah okay that's not a criticism but it, like if it gets to the point where like hold on I, as much as i like jordan peterson the man i've got plenty of criticisms of him especially his presence on twitter he just delete his twitter to be honest <laughs> at a certain point he's probably better off than that but like I'm not here to defend Jordan Peterson. I'm not here to talk about Jordan Peterson. I'm here to talk about the ideas that Peterson happens to have put forward at this point in time. Like yeah. you're saying, it's not, it's not, it goes back to our beginning or yeah, exactly. it's, it's not Peterson's idea that about. like everyone's religious. It's like, that's a pretty old idea. And so, you know, he happens to articulate it. Well, I happen to have <laughs> yeah. seen the lectures. And so it's easy for me to just take 
someone who speaks very clearly and articulate and put it in a lecture and then contrast it with someone who, like Robert Sapolsky, who's not in yeah. Jordan Peterson's worldview and, but show how they're saying the same thing. It's fun for me. And it, it's sort of like, yeah. it's like doing papers, but yeah, I definitely don't want to fall into the trap of like, well, you know, what Peterson says is true. And I'm, my brand is defending it's Jordan long. Peterson. It's like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. That's <laughs> funny. Cause you just, you brought up, I forgot we were talking about, you know, what, separating Jordan from, from Jordan's actual ideas. And uh, this this is on Twitter, and th- these man, Twitter is Twitter is a is a hello. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! You know, uh, I, I I I almost respect you for your distance away from Twitter. You don't you don't really get you don't get into that. Like you don't you don't get into that. More so, I've just I'll post little clips or videos or something like that just to get yeah. out there and put feelers out there. But I tr- yeah, I, and, and what was, was yeah, what's really toxic are these accounts and. This is really starting to spread. It's some these is, it, is, is these anonymous accounts with emoticon like profile pictures, but their profiles are like mustard twenty six, and they're and they you have no idea who this person is, and, but but and and they know so much. It's so creepy. It's like who is this guy? His username is mustard twenty six, and his profile picture is like Charles Manson or like Russell Wilson or something. It's something completely random. You have no idea who this person is, where they're from. They know so much and you're talking to this person. It's like you feel like you're like a schizo, like in a in a like in a, a sane song. Like you don't know who you're speaking to. You feel like you're you like you're like you've been like when you when you post something that happens to be right and everyone gets mad because you know you were right. These like demons from like hell, these anonymous demons from hell just start attacking you. It's so is so is it's so, so creepy. creepy. Schizophrenia and, simulator. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and and so so these demons. These are not. I'm just gonna you know use this metaphor because it's funny. These anonymous demons from hell started attacking Jordan in this book, uh, Maps and Meeting, and they were doing this like this like this this like biblical deconstruction you know ceremony. They were just you know they were just whacking off at it. You know, oh look at this stupid diagram and this one this one. Like my pony twenty eight reposted uh, one of Jordan's um, not even Jordan's one of the diagrams in Maps and Meaning, and he was like, look look how he he calls a matriarchal world. He, uh, no, it was like he was talking about light and dark, and he was like, why is he associating the the woman with with the woman with darkness and evil and the man with uh, light and power? Like oh he's just a he, and she was like another reason why Jordan's a, a evil misogynist. I'm like oh my god, like did you get did you get your did you get your high school diploma from like Walmart? Like, are you that stupid? Like, seriously, you're gonna attribute Jordan Peterson the divide of masculine and femininity with the the association with femininity and darkness and in cap and encapsulation and in and nurturance and that that female archetype and the male archetype with the sun soul with the, with lightness and power. You're gonna associate that that thousands of years of Egyptian and, 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 and Egyptian and Mesopotamian mythology you're gonna give that to Jordan Peterson yeah like who is the real Jordan like who is the real Jordan Peterson fan here you're gonna you're gonna credit yeah, that to Jordan I, know, I, 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 I like, make that like, like you know like, seriously like, yeah it's funny because his biggest critics attribute him more godlike status than anything like else. Jesus Christ you're gonna get you're gonna give that to him yeah like, Peterson's really? the first person who came up with these ideas <laughs> okay <laughs> well you're, you're, you're he said it. Than, than I am. He yeah. said it. This is so funny, man. Ah, oh, man, that was just hilarious. Wow. Wow, this was a, this was a fun conversation. Man. Yeah, it's it's always good. Oh, cool. Hell yeah. Do you have any, uh, anything else to say? Any more? Um... Uh, no, I guess if anyone, uh, you know, is interested in, um, well, I think you're playing on that thing, thing back there. there. What's that? Would you, would, would you know how to play on that? Oh, uh, the last. Yeah, yeah something. Not, yeah, some type of music. Yeah, the last two I printed out are uh, Chop, chopsticks. chopsticks. Sa- yeah, yep. <laughs> Sound of <laughs> Sound of Silence by Disturbed, and then uh, Come to Life by Kanye West. I wanted to learn the the uh, yeah. yeah that piece. So you like the more, so you like the classical guy, right? Yeah, I, <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Right. I I did have classic. I my piano teacher. We did classical training. I did all the you know. Uh, testing and all that through like classical training um, but no i always prefer to um just you know download the whatever the popular songs are although i haven't done it for a while I, I, right. right all right my airpods just uh my one of my 
right airpod just committed uh suicide okay. yeah. all right that's fair and this, man. appreciate it paul this is this is a great conversation man okay i appreciate it all right man you take, take care. care peace dude